welcome to the Chamber of Chills, my children. We have discussed many of Marvel's horror characters over the last few years, but how about a Marvel horror anthology? Chamber of Chills was one of four horror and science fiction anthologies released in the early 70s as part of the horror line, particularly due to the loosening of the comics code in 1971. The first four issues featured new material before gradually having more reprints of old pre-code stories. But this one, my children, is one of the ones with the original stuff. And we begin with the one featured on the cover, The Thing on the Roof. This is the story of Lord Tussman, who went on a journey to Central America in search of a great treasure in a lost temple. Natives assisted him in reaching the temple. The Temple of the Toad, even discovering a mummy and a frog-shaped jewel around its neck. However, the jewel also served as a key, opening up a hidden chamber that was said to possess an even greater treasure. Unfortunately, when Tasman ventured deeper into the tomb, he discovered the true meaning of the passage in his ancient scrolls. The temple's god is the temple's treasure. And after having fled from that god and returned back home, said god followed him back. And, well, it got the jewel back. Although poor Tussman would not part with it unless it was over his dead body. Next we have All the Shapes of Fear. The title is part of the opening narration, referring to our dreams. For it is only when we slumber that we can peer into our own souls and see that which we are most frightened of. And for Body and Ellen, they dream of a gnarled, ghostly hand, giant and looming, as it reaches down towards them. As they ride on a motorcycle, seeing their hand come at them again, they do not spot the child walking in front of them. When they hit the poor boy! Or do they? Events seem to be repeating over and over, the crash continuing to happen again and again. It is only later in the hospital when Buddy sees a vision in front of him of the accident once more that he understands. He reaches out to stop himself from running over the child, only to discover it is his own hand reaching back each time. It seems he is his own ghost in this case. For what are ghosts but the shadowy echoes of our own evil dreams? Well, they're also dead people. Or our pined memories. Ghosts can be a lot of things, come to think of it. And we end with the girl who cast no shadow. Journalist Reginald Atkins spots the woman with no shadow as she's walking along the street and asks for an explanation if possible. She explains that her shadow has been stolen. She tells the story of her father, who had gone to Egypt in search of a lost temple devoted to the god Ningal, eventually locating the lost crypt. Within it was a statue of the god, a creature that stood in a pile of skulls. Naturally, the thing was taken and brought to the British Museum, but soon after her father disappeared and her shadow was lost. The statue was walled up, and now her only hope is to retrieve her father's body within that new tomb and give it a proper burial. The journalist joins with her in the attempt. But upon entry, Ningal awakens and slays the poor journalist, and we soon see that this dear woman was all too happy to get rid of her shadow, for it actually is but a sign of her devotion to Ningal and the preservation of her own life. Remember, my children, not all curses are burdens, and for some, they just enjoy serving their god 